I want to talk about why I believe resumes should stop being used to get jobs. Resumes, in my opinion, are an old way of getting jobs and also applying to jobs. If I send my resume out to a company, they maybe look at it for 10, 15 seconds and with no validation as to whether or not I actually did the things on my resume. And then they make a determination based off if they see the keywords on my resume that match the job posting that they, are, that they have out. So if they have AWS, C Sharp, React, they're going to look for those keywords on my resume. Uh, if they don't match or if they're not worded in the same way, chances are my resume is probably going to get dropped from that selection pool. This is a problem because there's no way to validate what's true and accurate on my resume. There is a way to validate, though, a part uh, outside of the just the kind of the small world of resumes. Uh, you can do that on LinkedIn. You can do that with uh, portfolio websites and any other forms of social media that really I think things should move towards. Because if you actually go and apply on LinkedIn, your profile ultimately gets shared with whoever posted that job. And on LinkedIn, you can get verifications using previous work emails to verify that you actually you actually work there. Now, those verifications still happen uh, in the form of a manual process by way of the background check, but that's usually later on down the process. Uh, and then some companies still require references. They may call and, and you know ask about your previous employment history to say, hey, you know, did uh, Stephen actually work here? What did he do? And, and that sort of thing. But you can achieve that level of data as well um, on LinkedIn. Now, I understand that there's fake profiles, and I, I think that we're moving in the right direction with verifications um, and other forms of uh, checks that way. Um, and I think that really helps to solve a big problem that we're seeing on resumes, which is lying. People just flat out lying on resumes. Now, obviously, you shouldn't lie on your resume, and I don't, I don't condone that at all. Um, so the question we face is, okay, how do we get how do we fix that and how do we make it so that when a job gets posted 500 resumes don't just get flooded to that post and I've seen that I've actually applied to a job it was up for about three days it got 500 applications my resume was one that was selected out of 10 now I don't know how that happened but that's a problem that that this is an issue that's happening on job postings but I, I would say that those postings that are, are listed as remote uh, you know more not entry level like mid plus those job postings are always going to get spammed with the most amount of resumes on any of those job posting sites especially LinkedIn so when you see that okay you know we got 400 500 applications uh, <laughs> what you know what do we do with that and people say that you know there's no way to tell if that's accurate well during the interview process they told me exactly the number that were applied and it was over 400 and LinkedIn had 400 plus applications. So at least on my end, that's like one direct experience that I've had where that number actually actually lined up. Now, I would say that uh, with the problem with resumes as well is that it's it's a little bit of a game as to you know how you get your resume through the screening process. So we've already talked about including keywords, uh, but formatting of your resume is really really important. It's important because a lot of these tools that kind of like parse through your resume, uh, they're going to kind of freak out at, at weirdly formatted um, resumes with like maybe different fonts, different styles, different indentations. All those things really do matter for some companies that use these kind of resume parsing tools. Now, that's not to say that you you won't get through using a fancy resume. I don't I don't think that at all. But I think that if you're if you're in it. If you're looking at it just solely from a numbers game and you want your best shot at getting uh, your resume through, I really would keep it simple and I would kind of keep your core, the core things, the core things in your resume. Now, looking back at my previous jobs, I've done one of two things. I've done, you know, just the typical application process with my resume, but I've also then reached out to the hiring uh uh, either manager or, or, or somebody that was associated with that job posting on LinkedIn sent them a message just to get you know say hey uh, you know nice to meet you I, I just applied to uh, you know so-and-so job and then uh, s something along the lines of that you just got to establish the first connection because you're all you're, you're trying to get the first interview 
And that's really the that's really where the difficulty is comes into play. Now you shouldn't just spam people with messages and saying, "Hey, you know, <laughs> give me a job." <laughs> like that's not going to work either. But just be genuine. Just be honest and just say, "Hey, you know, I I applied and I'm really interested to learn about this job." You know, assuming you are right. Like, why else would you be applying? Um, now I I I completely understand that applying is is it's a numbers game, right? Like. In the past, uh, I've applied to like 75 jobs and I've heard back from maybe 25 and that's just how it is. But I, I will say that, again, you have to understand the pool of jobs you're applying to. Uh, companies that are local and don't hire remote and are smaller, chances are they might not even use this the uh, job posting site that you're looking at. Uh, a lot of times I've seen jobs on like smaller co companies, but still well established, that have their own independent career pages, but that's it. They, they're not really branching outside of that. So you actually have to go to them directly and then apply. And there's a lot of jobs that are undiscovered and not filled because they don't use the social media. Uh, and then, you know, when you get to the social media sites, it's easy just to, you know, key down and just spam apply, especially the LinkedIn easy apply ones. It takes you all of about, what, 10 seconds? Uh, and it's it's a real it's a real challenge. But I want to show you uh, the resume template that I've used for the past seven years. Okay, this is what I've used to a T. I'm going to show it up on the screen, and we're going to walk through it. And I, this is not I'm not making this stuff up. This is what I've used for seven years. Okay, I've gotten four jobs using this template of resume. There's nothing fancy. There's not. There's no. I'm not playing any games on this thing. It's just. It's flat. It's. It's as straightforward as can be. All right. So the top is name. What you know. What is your current title? Simple as that. What What are you employed as? That's what you put there. Your address. Your email. Your phone number. Your LinkedIn. And then your GitHub. GitHub. I would argue can be interchanged. I've had GitHub on here. I've also had my personal website when I had that when I was initially applying to entry-level roles um, so you can kind of pick and choose uh, you know github but you absolutely need to have LinkedIn on there the first part I have about uh, in the about me section is just technical skills and that's it all you need to do you need to list out every technology that you have experience with uh, you can list them out in order of like most experienced to least experienced but everything you have used, I don't care what it is, every technology you've used, put it on here. C Sharp, JavaScript, AWS, Azure, whatever you used, whatever you've, whatever technology you have built something with, you have to put it on here. It doesn't matter how big or small of a project it is. If you have experience, you need to put it on here because you have to, again, you're playing the game of, of keywords. And ultimately, <clears throat> now if you've used the technology once, like, like, oh, I, I made a Hello World app in Python. You know, okay, maybe, maybe don't put that on here. But assuming you've used it <coughs> to some degree, I put it on here. Education is next. Uh, if you've went to school, put your school. If you if you got a degree, you know, put that in your GPA, and then just the basic like, okay, here's when I started. Here's when I graduated. Um, the next section I used to have below the experience, but I've since actually flipped those. So the, this is where personal projects are. Personal projects for me, my goal for personal projects is to make them stand out more than my work experience. That should be the goal, in my opinion, for personal projects. That's how I look at it. So my personal projects, I have current projects and then previous projects. Current projects I usually uh, talk about a little more in depth. So per, uh, the current projects, like you've seen on the stand-up channel, I would talk about it at, at length. Obviously, I have, I've slimmed this down a little bit, but I'm saying, okay, I'm building a two-stroke engine simulator system. Again, that, that's a little bit eye—that's a little bit eye-catching, and I've had people ask about this. So uh, I'm just going to say it's a Rust microservice, load tested to process over one million messages in approximately 1.5 minutes. We have a video on that. We can validate that. We have a real-time notification system using Rust, Raven, MQ, and SignalR. And then I would talk about it more. But that's talking about it in a way that's technical, in a way that describes, okay, how the technologies are being used. You don't want to get too fluffy with anything, especially not in the About Me section. 
if you, you don't you don't need an about me like sentence or two like I'm um, look you know software engineer seeking new job you don't you don't need that because that's what your resume is already saying what you know about you 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 are a software engineer a software developer whatever whatever you're calling yourself and you're applying to a job so that's already assumed so I've never had an about me description ever I've only had the technical skills section uh, and then so previous projects you know just put what stuff you built so like I've, I've made a lot of like embedded um, I've done a lot of embedded systems programming with like Arduino stuff around engines so I made a uh, two-stroke engine like RPM uh, monitor that I put on like a, a gas blower that I'm working on uh, and I did it with uh, with like a C based language so I, I put that on here and then my other one is the uh, two iOS apps published to App Store so again you want to have your personal projects talked about at length and that should be the goal is to okay <clears throat> I can you know I can talk about my work experience but here's what I'm working on like is you know this is the personal pro this is stuff that I'm super interested in and this is where I learned programming I mean truly uh, doing this stuff and then below or above depending on how you or orient these sections you want to have experience uh, listed out so you know job one two three whatever and obviously the dates are you know bogus but but whenever you started put whenever you ended I don't usually go into the day I just keep it month year and then my current uh, current job you put like present or whatever and then same thing start and start and date the big thing with this is again you want to you 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 want to get the keywords lined up for a job you're post you're you're applying to so if I have experience in C sharp and AWS and I'm applying to a job for a developer that uses C sharp and AWS you better believe that I'm going to have things on my role talking about that. So again, you want to have the keywords, but you also want to talk about how did how did you add value to the last place you were at? Because it's not about it's not about you. It's about what you what you brought to the to the table that's going to be on the discussion for the next job. So you want to say, okay, what did I actually do? I this is the part where it's a little bit of a game. You don't want to get like super. Uh, you know f you don't want to get fluffy but you want to keep it technical and and keep it the sentences talking about how you brought value so I, I might say like okay I led team architecture reviews that's the talking point people are gonna ask about that and say okay what did that look like what what did what did your team makeup look like so there's a lot there that can be discussed the, the second one you know you can have like okay I generated X number of dollars on this project that's great that that shows you that's a talking point and that shows the next employer okay this person actually is thinking about how they're bringing value to the table I I was given a piece of advice at one of my internships to always take notes as to what projects you work on and like what things that you've done and who you've interacted with and keep kind of a log of of those projects because when you look back at it you can you'll be able to better talk about the value that you brought to whatever place you work and I thought that was a good piece of advice the other piece of advice I was given was to talk to as many people in the company as you can send them send them a meeting so just just get acquainted with people and say hey I want to learn more about your job and how does my job interact with with your job and I thought that was I, at first I didn't like that but I think that really helped me in the long run because it helped me communicate better with people and it helped me to understand how my role kind of fits into you know what somebody else does and there's an inherent value there because sometimes problems arise that you don't know of that you can find solutions of just by talking to someone just seeing you know what what problems do you have or, or things like that so uh, talk about any like awards or whatever you got th for work from uh, talk about any kind of recognitions you got talk about you know all the features and things that you've you added how they've added value um, any kind of like uh, any kind of meetings that you held I would include that just like any kind of more leadership roles and things um, but again that's the basic structure and again I, this is what I, I this is the template that I made and, and, have, and have used uh, again there's nothing here uh, there's some formatting things that have been helpful it seems um, especially on uh, uh, well <laughs> So like here, I'm going to highlight um, most sentences, you probably should just make sure end in periods, especially on points. 
it seems that um, from when your resume is parsed, uh, those it'll be parsed better if it if it is delimited with a period. Um, now, there's been some exceptions. Uh, typically, it seems like the workday application ones do pretty well with parsing. Uh, there, there's a couple other systems that don't seem to get it, but for the most part, I found this to be really helpful. It seems that the pipe delimited stuff does really well, uh, if you're looking at it and I've never had an issue with, uh, the address, email or anything being parsed usually. Um, yeah, so the pipe delimited stuff, I don't know if the dashes are more effective than the, uh, than the bullet points. I'm not sure. I don't, I haven't seen too much of that, but again, this is kind of what should be going through your head. Like maybe you know, is my resume like not being parsed correctly in the res in that in that system to not be picked up? Or are my keywords kind of being lost in translation a little bit? Those are the things that you should be mindful of. Um, but again, <clears throat> resumes, in my opinion, are kind of a dying thing. I, at least they should be. I, I maintain a pretty active LinkedIn, and I think that that's a necessity in today's kind of market for jobs. Um, and I think once you get verifications, once you get kind of recommendations from past em employers that you've worked at and like maybe like um, and, and just everything that you can, I think that your LinkedIn should be as maintained as your resume. And I think that you should use that to your advantage when applying to jobs. Just reach out to people, talk to people and just see, just get a feel because that's all this is, right? It's you're 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 interviewing the person as much as they're interviewing you. And I, I think that that's the hard part to get across. And again, there's there's, there's going to be jobs out there that you apply to that you fit everything and you still don't get. I've applied to I've applied to roles where I've literally fit every technical qualification out there and I didn't get picked. That's always going to happen, and you can't be discouraged by that. It's just. It, it's just the way things are. You never know what happens when you submit your resume or whatever. Um, I've reached out to people on LinkedIn and I've never heard back. You're going to have that too. You just have to keep going. You're finding a job has to become your new job. I mean, honestly, I spent, I, I spent north of like hour and a half every day applying to jobs. And I just made that, I became obsessed. I allow, I allow myself to be become obsessed truly with applying and making it my mission to hear back from places and to start the conversation because that's all you're doing is starting the conversation with that first interview. You want to get your, you want to lay stuff out on the table, say, Hey, here's what I'm looking for. Uh, and everything like that. You know, here's what I'm looking for in a company, your kind of my requirements and everything. And that should be the introduction to the conversation. And people just want to have a conversation about where you're at, why you're applying and is this going to be a right fit? We're gonna get into an. We're gonna get into the topic of actual technical interviews in a later video because I think those are also broken. And we're gonna talk about that and what I think and why I think largely they are broken for the mass amount of technical jobs available. We're getting into that later video, but I, hopefully this was helpful. Looking at a resume, just just talking about it, and I hope that nobody gets discouraged about applying. It's just the way things are. You just have to keep going. It took me months. I, I spent months every day for months. Applying and just, just, you know, just going through the process. It's just, you just have to do it. And it's just the way things are. But, you know, keep at it. It's, it can be discouraging for sure, but try to stay positive and it'll work out. And all right. So I think that's it. We're going to go down the rabbit hole too much. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next one.